Hello everyone, back to you in today's first video, doing January Friday for today's first video. As always, on a Friday, we're having a look at weather for the coming month with the Japanese and CFS v models. This takes us to around the middle part of uh, October. Uh, later on today, we'll have a verification for the summer 2017 forecast. We'll see how the uh, GazWebs.com summer forecast went. As always, with long-range forecasts that we issue at website, we do verify them when we get to the end of the season. So that's what we'll be doing uh, this afternoon. But as I say, today's first video is uh, JMA Phrase. So we're going to go through the month with the Japanese and then have a look at CFSB2 models as well. See if we can pick up some trends for the month ahead. Bear in mind, this is a very uncertain time of the year due to the influence of tropical storms, hurricanes in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and the way they interact with the jet stream. Uh, and so on, where they go and uh, what they do. So always very uncertain time, both in terms of shorter range forecasting and long range forecasting as well. And with any long range forecast, more than about a week to 10 days ahead, you should always take it with a very large pinch of salt. In any case, but we will endeavour to uh, see what uh, may happen in the month ahead. So we're going to start off with the uh, JMA. These are the 500 millibar high denominators broken down into weekly peers. The first week period will take us from today, the 15th, through to the 22nd of uh, September. So, with these charts, uh, the bright colours, reds and oranges, yellows, they are extrapolating to high pressure, above average heights, within 500 millibars, that's high pressure. And the blue colours are extrapolating to below average heights, within 500 millibars, and that's low pressure. So, for the uh, week ahead, we find that uh, the JMA is placing an area of above average heights to the north country. This is the north, uh, northern hemisphere view, by the way. So, we've got the North Pole up here and, and then the mid-latitudes of the northern uh, hemisphere are uh, around uh, the edges. British Isles is just there. So, um, for the week ahead, we've got above average heights sitting to our north. We've got below average heights over and to the south of the country. Country. And uh, probably bringing in a bit of an e easterly influence as well uh, with that. It does look quite unsettled there for the week ahead and probably fairly cool as well. We go through to week two. We see quite a substantial change. This takes us from the 22nd to the 29th of September when we have a large area of above average heights setting up. Uh, well, just around the whole of northwestern Europe, really. So uh, much of the UK and Ireland under that ridge as is much of Central Europe, and it does extend into the Atlantic, goes up towards green as well. It's a very large ridge of high pressure. The mean wind flow will probably still be a bit easterly, maybe southeasterly, will be a lot drier compared to week one, and probably pleasantly warm, but we will have to watch out for uh, some pretty chilly nights, maybe with some mist and fog patches. But that final week of September does look quite nice there, and that ridge of above average heights. I'm going to go through to uh, the first two weeks of October. October. This is actually 29th of September to the 13th of October. And uh, another really quite substantial change. A very changeable period coming up. This one takes the above average heights over towards Greenland and uh, up towards the uh, Arctic. Now we've got this area of below average heights setting up over the UK and going to our uh, east and northeast as well. So what we're doing with this is we're bringing down some pretty chilly north uh, northerly influences and it also looks quite unsettled as well. That could be quite a cold start to October. Uh, maybe even talking about risk of some frost with that. I would have thought the way the trough is centred over to the east of the country. Certainly the air is coming down from the north-northwest or maybe even the north northeast, and we will probably be seeing a fair amount of rain at times as well. This area of low pressure just here in the Atlantic could be sending energy uh, into the south. So we've got that low pressure just there. That could be uh, sending energy to the southern part of the country. So maybe the wettest conditions could be in the south. But overall, that does look quite unsettled and also quite cold there as we go into the uh, first couple of weeks of October. Remember, remember that is a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be a little bit transitional. 
Uh, have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights. And so this is the tropical and mid-latitude view. The uh, equator, of course, is just there. We've got the northern hemisphere on the northern side of the equator there, southern hemisphere on the southern side of the equator. The poles are off the chart. That's the South Pole uh, down there. And the North Pole also is off the chart, but we're just looking at that view, of course, from the pole down. North Pole is uh, up here. This is America uh, just there. Um, this is sort of Asia area over here. This is Europe over here, and perhaps most importantly for us, this is the Atlantic and the British Isles and Ireland just there. So now that everybody knows where everybody is, let's just uh, recap on what the height anomaly was for the coming week. This is the 15th to the 22nd of uh, the month. And we find we've got below average heights over the uh, UK and to the south of the UK with above average heights. Can't we really see it? Up to the north. You expect this to be quite a cool uh, week ahead. In fact, the model is going for cooler than average temperature anomalies in the week ahead. Quite a chilly week coming up. And precipitation anomalies are more or less on the wetter and average side as well. So this continues to look fairly unsettled and cool, really, for the uh, week ahead. We go through to week two. This is the 22nd, 29th of September. Significant changes take place. We have above average heights around the UK now. So high pressure is uh, coming back. It also extends up here and it goes over here into much of Europe as well. This looks like a much more settled scenario and also potentially warmer. So the temperature anomaly is coming out uh, a little bit above average there for that last week of September. And the precipitation anomaly you expected, expected to be drier and uh, that's what the model is doing. Most parts of the country coming out with a dry and average, average week. We aren't all that far away from rainfall. We've got some uh, above average rainfall being predicted for many parts of Europe. So still quite unsettled there, particularly for central and uh, southern Europe. But up across the British Isles, most places are coming out drier than uh, average. And then we move through to uh, weeks three and four, which takes us from 29th of September through to 13th of October. And another very significant change is taking place. Now the low average heights are coming back and centering over the UK. They also go to the east of the UK as well. And you can't see it because it's off the, uh, off the chart, but the pole has a uh, high pressure going on up here around Greenland and to the north of Greenland. You expect this to be a much more unsettled and cooler week. Temperature anomalies are actually holding up not too bad. Uh, so probably a little bit on the mild of an average side, if anything, but let's say close to normal, really, with, precipita with the uh, temperature anomaly for that uh, first couple of weeks of October. Rainfall is increasing, though, so this does look an unsettled week to a uh, couple of weeks, to say the least, from the 29th of uh, September to the 13th of October. We come out there uh, wetter than average. I think probably it would be a bit cooler than the model is suggesting for those couple of weeks. Uh, bear in mind, it's transitional, so it might be the first week of October is fairly mild, and then it gets colder in the second week, something like that. But going back to the uh, anomaly, the pressure anomaly, which is this one, uh, I think that would be bringing the wind flow down from a north either northwesterly or maybe even northeasterly direction, but the mean direction would be northerly. So I think that would be quite a cold start to uh, October. Let's see how the CFS V2 is handling things. So these are 500 mm heights. Again, we've got the first week here taking us from the 15th through the 21st of September. It's identical, really, to the JMA. So we've got good agreement between the two models a week ahead. We've got high pressure going on up here. We've got low pressure over the UK and to the northeast, probably bringing in the flow, something like that. It looks like it would be cool and quite unsettled in the week ahead. Moving through to uh, week two temperature anomalies. This takes us from the 22nd to the 8th of September. So we've got above average heights through the Atlantic and going up towards Greenland and also extending back here, some northern blocking. The trough is centering still around the west of Europe. Uh, so with the jet stream, we're doing something a bit like that. And uh, we are still placed on the cool side of the jet, really, there through that last week of September. This is when the JMA is suggesting a drier 
and warmer interlude potentially. CFS, I don't think he's really seen that. Uh, it still looks quite unsettled and quite cool there, even into the final week of September. Uh, and then we go through to week three, which is the 29th of September to the 5th of October. Above average heights through the Atlantic and extending up towards Greenland, below average heights around the UK. So again, this sort of really good agreement between the two models. Um, got quite a lot of high pressure going on up here. We've got low pressure around here. We're probably bringing the wind in from uh, sort of a northerly, northeasterly type direction. So again, that looks quite cool and changeable through the opening days of October. We finish up with week four, the 6th to the 12th of October, looking like this. Still looking pretty cool and changeable, really. Low pressure is around the west of Europe and into Scandinavia. Still the suggestion of some above average heights up to the north, albeit weakening perhaps. Uh, but again, I think the flow is probably doing something like that. So that looks still pretty uh, pretty cool and changeable to be going into the second week of October. Let's have a look at the temperature anomalies with CFS V2. So uh, week one temperature anomalies the 15th, 23rd of September. They're coming out cooler than average. Another cool week coming up. Week two temperature anomalies from the 22nd to the 8th of September. Still more or less on the cooler than average side. This is where me, uh, JMA, was seeing a warmer week there for the last week of September. CFS still looking a bit cool, uh, if anything. Week three, which is the 29th through uh, September through to the 5th of October. Again, average to possibly being a little bit on the cooler than average side. And then week four rounds it off. And again, I think it's average to possibly again being a little bit on the cooler than average side. So quite a coolish uh, coolish month coming up, actually. I think September would be coming out with below average temperatures if this is right. And they probably extend to some degree into October as well. Precipitation anomalies, finally. So uh, the coming week, the 15th, 21st of September, is looking more or less wetter than average across many parts of the country, particularly focused on England and Wales. Week 2, 22nd, 28th of September, also looking wetter than average. That's when the JMA wanted it drier. So we have got a split between these two models between the last week, uh, between what they're doing for the last week of September. Uh, then we go through to week three, which is the 29th of September, 5th of October. That one also looking a little bit wetter than average. Week four uh, is reverting back to average. I think we're just losing the signal now at this point. Overall, the CFS uh, V2 does look pretty cool and pretty changeable for the next month. Uh, you have to say. But JMA also looking quite cool and changeable for the next month, but it does give us a drier and warmer interlude for the final week of September. Um, so which one's going to be right? I don't think it's very difficult to say. The overall uh, the overall sort of prediction from two models is for quite cool and changeable conditions to persist through much of September into October. We may get a drier and warmer interlude at some point in the second half of September. But overall, a bit of a mixed bag, really, going into October with JMA Friday today. Remember, as always, it's highly experimental. These charts are prone to chopping and changing, so... Don't take anything that you see here too seriously. It's just a guide, really, what the two models are indicating today. They could all look very, very different as we get through to uh, next week's JMA Friday update. Uh, later on today, we'll have a verification for the summer 2017 forecast from gaslovies.com. So come back for that later. And tomorrow, it's a week ahead forecast. We'll also have the CFS six-month look ahead. Um, and that one really is just for fun. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.